Hello people of the interwebs. I am... Sorry, people are leaving me random messages and I'm looking around at them. I am um, I, I'm on the front cover of the Small Business Owner magazine this month. So I thought I would make you a non-glamorous video just using my little webcam here um, in the place where I create things with my, my green screen here, which I'm not going to use in this video, but if you want to see what I can do with it, go to join-rebecca.com and you will see a video that I made with it. And I'm going to be doing lots more of that over the next few weeks and months and so forth. And um, yeah, I come to you fully not completely prepared in a scabby old uh, fleece. These things last for years, by the way. I keep thinking, I should throw this thing out. It's years old, but it's so warm and comfy. I can't see the point in throwing it out. It's just so comfy. This this fleece, and there's an old jumper of mine as well, which I've made a few videos in, that every time I put them on, I think, why would I throw this away? I love it. It's so comfy. So anyway, that's what I'm wearing today, and I couldn't be bothered to get changed. Um, I haven't brushed my hair. But I just wanted to make this video because I was thinking about something that I wrote for The Spectator in nine, 19, no it wasn't that long ago, 2009-2010 and it it's an article that was called, you can't find it online anymore, it used to be on their blog, um, but it was called We Are The New History and I was thinking about that today and I thought I wonder if people get this and they might not even now get it and I need to kind of share it while I'm thinking about it. So here's the whole concept behind it. I've got to keep looking there because I'm getting distracted because I've got Facebook going on behind and I can see like messages and somebody just lolled at something but anyway. Um, what you need to understand is that you are currently making history not because there's anything f fantastically brand new about what you're doing here. Um, it's not in 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 our lifetimes. This is no biggie, you know. Just hanging out on Facebook, it's really no big deal. Um, the people who were around in the eighties and nineties on the internet were doing groundbreaking stuff. This stuff isn't groundbreaking. It's just people hanging out. The reason you're making history is because in the big scheme of things what you're doing is a big deal. In the same way as when people first started to put out um, kind of trash fiction on using a printing press or even newsletters and things um, on printing presses when it first came out were making history because some of that stuff some of that stuff survives and is really important so you can find something that's not even that literary but it's really important because it speaks of the experience of life that people at that time were having and the same is going to happen with your status updates so you're creating literature right now whether you realize it or not so every time you post something on Facebook you've got to think okay how am I going to feel if that becomes part of the equivalent of a book, a history book that's taught in universities in a hundred years time and somebody is studying me because what I think is going to happen in the fullness of time and this will weird some of you out is that people will be able to do a university degree or the equivalent on a person just a randomer, just a random person like you. Whether you were interesting or not, you'll have enough data out there, you will have published enough work, because that's what you're doing every time you press send, is publishing to the web. You will have published enough work if you've been on Facebook with the kinds of privacy terms and conditions that Facebook has to be considered highly published and there'll be enough about you for someone to do a degree on you. I, th I really think it's going to be something like that, that you can just pick somebody's life and you can just 
you know, pick it apart and look at the communication that the person used in public, look at the stuff they sent in direct messages, because all that stuff's going to become available in the fullness of time. If you look at the um, p the political notices and letters and things that you can see when you look at them were never meant to be public. You know, they just weren't private things that after a period of time, the data protection uh, legislation goes away on them and they become public knowledge and anyone can read them. The same is going to happen to your private messages on Facebook and your Facebook updates and your Twitter updates and in fact every tweet until relatively recently I, I don't know if it's still happening but every tweet that you ever put out on Twitter was being stored by the Library of Congress as historical documentation. So if you were on Twitter between 2000, about 2009 and I think definitely 2009, 2011, possibly 2009, 2012, you are already part of history. So future generations, whether you're related to them or not, are going to look back on your life and use you as a marker for what was happening in the world. Your responses on national disasters, international disasters, etc. will be monitored. Your social graphs will be monitored. Um, everything will be compared to everything else. The data will be extrapolated. You'll, you'll be deemed to be a type. There'll be books written about you. There will. And however ordinary you think your status updates are and however unacademic or seemingly not teaching anyone anything you think your updates are, they're still data, they're still culture. Anyone here who's actually studied sociology will verify this. Whether you perceive that you are part of culture or part of a culture or not you are, and you are expressing it every day through everything that you do and don't do. Every success, every failure, every missed opportunity. And all of these, all of these are going to be... <laughs> are, are you freaking out yet? I mean, I've always known this, but a lot of people I know don't. So this is why I'm sharing it. It's all going to be analysed. So if you think that you got away with it by not taking action, by not playing a bigger game, as Fabian Fredrickson says you know, that that somehow nobody noticed. They may not have done yet, but they will because people are going to be going through all of your stuff. It's like Time Team. If you've ever watched Time Team, it's like that. But they will have all of your thoughts. They will have your, your digital footprint, everything, your search history, everything. It's like... Um, you know, it's it's like the concept of being like the all-seeing eye or like God or whatever, that you are constantly being watched. You are constantly being watched when you're online. And the amount of time that most people spend online, the amount of personal stuff that you put online, people have an extraordinary amount of information about you. I just want you to think about that when you're posting online. Now, when I started out, we were very, very heavily into um, personal security personal information security. I used to spend just crazy amounts of time doing due diligence on every single organisation that I did any kind of business with. Um, we, we got them to jump through crazy numbers of hoops before we do business with them to make absolutely sure that they were protecting people's personally identifiable information and they weren't putting that together with things like search results and um, advertising and stuff like that. That they weren't kind of spying on you but now everybody is and whereas when this all started out and you had somebody like double click coming along and people going oh my god I can't believe it no don't click on those ads because the moment you click on those ads they know that you've been here and you've done that and and it was shocking and people freaked out about it now it happens all the time Facebook follows you all over the web Google follows you everywhere this stuff is all kept it's all stored it's it's there and if you read your, your privacy 
conditions, your terms and conditions on something like Facebook, they're horrendous. There's actually something else. I just got invited into a, a, an invitation only beta on. It's this going to be this big, huge, great, big thing. And clearly, I'm very privileged to be invited to it because by the looks of things, when I got in there, I was probably one of the first maybe five people in the world to be invited to be part of it. But then I read the privacy uh, policy and I left and sent them an email and said, look, there is not a way in, in <laughs> there's just no way in the world that I'm going to be part of this and bring this to the masses in any way unless you change your privacy policy because it's absolutely disgusting. It And so many of them are. But the point is you you can't kind of, you know, the horse is out of the stable now. You can't, <laughs> there's no point bolting the door. It's gone. It's bolted. Um, so your information's out there. You are out there. And your data is all being collected and put together. And who you are as a person is being, is being formulated into something not entirely human which is weird. We're going to go into a scary space now. You've got something like Google Glass coming out. We're, we're kind of becoming androids. Computers are an extension of our consciousness now. They're, they're other senses that we have. Data is becoming who we are. It's weird and it's spooky if you think about it too much, or it's exciting and amazing if you're Robert Scoble. <laughs> but um, it's worth bearing in mind. In this article that I did for um, for the Spectator, what I was talking about was the fact that I'd met somebody on on Twitter who I didn't know at all. The reason we connected was because of her last name, which happened to be the name of my family's Scottish, the Scottish side of my family's clan. And through a process of elimination, we realised that um, one of my ancestors had carried the heart of one of her ancestors off the field of battle hundreds of years ago. And this was kind of dismissed with a lol. It was like a little thing that happened on Twitter and then it was gone. And how weird is that? How weird is that that, you know, these families used to meet in the past on the battlefield or in, uh, you know, in big events or however they met or in factories or farms or wherever. And... And now everybody is just meeting online. You could you could have a really significant connection with someone and not even know it. And uh, the the little battles that we have online. These are kind of like the big battles that used to happen back in the day, but without the bloodshed. You could have a massive, great big feud going on on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or whatever. And it could be analysed in the same detail as a battle on the battlefield in the future. Because so many people are meeting online, so many people are, so many marriages are happening online, so much crime is happening online, so much of life is happening online now that all of these seemingly trivial meetings aren't trivial at all. Their life, their culture. Um, so you're creating culture you're the new history you're creating the history books every single time you post something so I would say be careful what you post but if you're too careful what you post then it's not really going to reflect true culture so I'm not going to edit this I am wearing a fleece and I am tired <laughs> and it's late at night and I'm whispering a bit and it's probably not the best audio quality 
I'm probably too close to this microphone because I don't know how to use it yet. But that's real life and that's where we're living. And I think this is an amazing time to be alive. I think if this video is looked at by someone who is studying the Great Depression of this moment in time or the giant recession or whatever they decide to call it, it's not that bad. I mean it's bad. There's lots of bad stuff that's happened. I've gone through stages of living on a pound a day, well 50p a day, and 50 pence a day for me. Um, I've gone through malnutrition and hypothermia and you know, I've gone through banks closing and just recessionary insanity, but uh, I've also made loads and loads of friends and turned things around and made good money and done all kinds of other stuff during the recession, so isn't it cool that we get to show all sides of, of how we live and what we do? and that we're able to help future researchers get their research right so that the history books of the future are actually accurate. Anyway, I want to um, leave you with that because I've just broken all kinds of rules. This is going on for 16 minutes and 30 seconds so far, which is about, uh, I don't know, probably about 10 to 15 minutes too long. But I hope I've given you something to think about. And don't forget to pick up the Small Business Owner magazine because it's free and I'm on the front cover. Um, and you can get loads of other cool stuff if you go to joinrebecca.com and you can get even more cool stuff if you put your details in the sidebar, including a free book. Bye for now.